And I believe uh, we have uh, one more survivor who's joining us on the broadcast, Mala Kashyap with us uh, here on Republic. Mala, thank you so much for speaking to us. We hope you're doing well and, uh, you know, thank you for taking out time for speaking to us. Uh, even as I speak to you, Mala, we are looking at the chief minister now at the tragedy site and he says that BMC officials there, uh, five of them have been suspended. Are you satisfied, Mala, after what you went through last night? Well, honestly, I, I well, to, to sort of set the context, I am uh, still extremely, extremely shaken up from the situation. Um, I think the root cause is not necessarily um, a, a, a drastic approach of this nature. I think it's got to do a lot with the fact that uh, the, the fire did cause a certain amount of anxiety, panic amongst each one of us, uh, which which we were probably at that point in time rushing in direction for survival. Uh, yes, I absolutely do agree on the fact that uh, from an infrastructure point of view, it was extremely essential for that floor to have the right kind of signages to be able to guide us better, uh, because at, at at the point that this happened, within four to six minutes, we were actually pushing ourselves into elevators, which is actually the most detrimental form of escape at the site of a fire. Um, and, and we had no clue where the fire exit stairway was. And I think that by default became mm. uh, a very, very, very uh, crucial piece for lots of us on that on that moment at that time where if we had uh, somebody, some personnel on that floor from a security point or anything that took the ownership to to scream, shout, uh, allow, find a way to get us all out of that mm. building in the right way, uh, I think that was critical. So, Mala, if I can, anything. because we're running out of time as well, were you, were you in one above and could you tell us how this fire broke out? Because some people say there was some sort of show going, show going on, some bottle broke and after that there was a fire. You know, honestly, actually, I wasn't in one above. I was in Cafe Mojo next door. And uh, I literally entered the venue at 11.47 and about 12.19, one of my, I, was, I wasn't facing the direction of the fire. And at 12.19, a friend sitting opposite me noticed that there's a fire. And like most other normal people, we reacted to saying, oh, okay, it's something small, it'll, it'll die out. But literally within six seconds while I was recording a video, uh, you could, I could see the fire less than 10 meters away from me. And then at that moment, you just ran. Like it was, so for, for any of us that were at the site at the moment, when we saw the fire, I don't think we looked at directionally where it came from. Mm. So in, All in, right, in, uh, Mala Kashyap there, one of the, the survivors uh, recalling. Yes, go on, Mala. Please, please finish your yeah, point. So for me, it was at the back of me, but at the same time, uh, the ceiling was, was a cloth ceiling, uh, and therefore the fire rapidly ran towards towards all of us and that that was literally i think it would have possibly not spread as fast even if it was a bottle breaking and a flame uh and i think that that was a very very mm. critical piece and mala you know i i then just want to take this moment to understand from you what exactly happened you know how did you people exit uh, who helped you to exit? How many people were there? Did you locate any uh, fire extinguishers, uh, you know, on, on the eatery that you were? No, so I definitely did, didn't did notice the fire extinguishers. Like I said, there was no signage for the fire exit sign. Um, or maybe it was just too many of us. We were definitely more than about 100 of us that were trying to get out. Uh, because I did go into one above initially to get a to get a to get a seating, but they were over full, which means both restaurants were in their full capacity at that point in time. Uh, so we were definitely about a hundred odd of us mm. that were trying uh, to run off that that very very tiny uh, passageway. And what happened is that the fire was at Mojo, which was the one extreme end, and the shift shaft of the elevator was in the other extreme end. So geographically, we had come up via the elevator. So by default, we walked in the direction that we had come up, hoping that the stairway mm. was around the elevator. But it was actually mm. on the other side where the fire was uh, the fire was at its peak. So in a way, I'm glad we got shoved into that elevator mm. and came down. But uh, there were people that were left on the floor. And mm. if, the, if the elevator 
or the power was cut off, then they ended up taking the stairway because once I came down the building and moved about 10 feet away, uh, we could see people running down the fire exit of that building. You know, Mala, what you're telling us is absolutely shocking and uh, we're very happy to know that you're safe. But uh, give us a sense, do you feel that other eateries in this area, in the Kamla Mills compound, are no different when it comes to fire safety norms? Do you feel that this was a disaster just waiting to happen? Uh, well, honestly, I, I uh, do visit Kamla Mills very often. In fact, it, it's, it's one of the places that we go to perpetually to be trying out new places. Um, and honestly, I don't think we would have expected any of this. I think genuinely one was this whole um, ceiling piece, which I think is like, I mean, it's a no-brainer cloth catches the fire before anything else and runs even further rapidly. And then if you're an eatery and a bar and all of that, uh, you do have spirits in the restaurant. You do have a kitchen running, which which requires gas, cylinders, etc. Uh, so it becomes extremely critical for, for the restaurant here to believe in the product and the quality of uh, of infrastructure that they're using in the restaurant. And honestly, I haven't, I haven't felt this in, uh, in a lot of the, the better done restaurants of Kamla Mills. Hmm. And Mala, you know, there were also certain reports indicating uh, towards the presence of cylinders. D hmm. Did you look at anything inflammable that was perhaps left around there anywhere that you noticed? Oh, no, I, I honestly didn't. I honestly didn't. So you didn't, uh, you didn't see any uh, cylinders. Uh, but uh, Mala, coming, coming yeah. to the role of uh, the staff at your restaurant, you were at uh, Mojo Bristro. Were they helpful in letting you out? And just describe the scene. When you stepped out, when you saw one above, when you saw that massive fire, just, just tell our viewers, describe for us what you saw, the chaos outside at that point in time. Well, genuinely, it was absolutely chaotic. I will say that some of the security guys that stand there and the host is there, so the guys that are responsible for registering you when you enter a restaurant, uh, a lot of them were yelling and, and shouting out for people to keep walking, don't stop, don't turn around. Uh, you know, they, they were definitely helpful. Again, the passageways were so narrow that I, I think if they decided to come in the way, more people would have gotten stuck as opposed to being able to get out. Uh, there was absolute panic. I did see one young boy that had uh, got a few burn marks on him. And, and a little later when I went downstairs and I was walking towards the exit of Kamla Mills, I did see another young boy um, who had um, who had burns on his hand. But I also saw ice with him in his hand. Uh, so I'm hoping that it was actually one of the restaurateurs that helped with...